Bro, I got to buy a camper. I don't know why you got it already. Yeah, I got to buy. Kind of upset that you had already got one. Let's start so I'm, the compound. I'm kind of thinking. I'm, no, I mean I'm I'm comfortable with the word cold. <laughs> like we don't have to call it a compound. We can, we can just call it what it is. Call it a cold. And then if we get enough people, I'm sure there's some way that we can like secede from the union mm. and become our own independent nation. If you can, if you can pull that off, there's not a whole. What is that? that? Well, you. You talk about this a salesman. A trillion. You talk about a salesman. Like how do you I've convinced this that? dude that I'm going to sleep with your wife and you can no longer sleep with her. Bro, that is insane. Bro, we're podcasting. Here we are. Success Unleashed Podcast, man. So this is the this is the first episode. Obviously, like you're like my best friend, super tight. So the thought process was kind of like, hey, I'm new to this podcasting thing. We're going to figure it out. And what better to use as a guinea pig than one of your closest friends in the world? And we just kind of wing it. Bro, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's going to be fun, man. Uh, so the the premise of the show, everybody, y'all probably already watched the intro if you're watching the first episode. But essentially what we're trying to do is, especially here in the upstate of South Carolina, kind of give other business people an opportunity to to talk about their story, how they got into the position they are, you know, some sales tips, some things you do that make you successful. And then ultimately, especially knowing you like I do, like how do we find work-life balance to to maintain like a happy marriage, being a good dad and all that stuff kind of, you know, lumped into it. Yeah, that's tough. It's, it's such a challenge, man. Uh, yeah. Um. So let's, let's start grassroots it from the beginning. So like you served in the Navy. I did. What made you... And, and I feel so, like, forced doing these questions, like, and maybe it'll make for a good podcast. Maybe it won't. I mean, I guess everybody will kind of tell us. But, like, I know you, so I know most of the answers to these questions, but they don't know you. Yeah. So, like, I guess from that standpoint, just kind of starting from the beginning, you know, for these people, what made you, like, think the Navy was the route you wanted to go? Man. Uh, I don't know. Family history of... uh military i guess was kind of what pushed me in that direction um wasn't digging college so dropped out of college uh what was and, you studying uh, yeah, i don't even know no nah, yeah i was trying to go into the x-ray program just because my mom did ultrasound so that's kind of the route she took so you don't know what you're doing at 18 years old right. you have no idea what you want to do so anyways um dropped out of college uh went to the navy ended up doing way more school than I ever would have done if I'd have just done the four years and been done with it. Right. So anyways, ended up getting my degree while I was in the Navy. Um, and then, you know, Michelle, holy crap, dude, she uh she she helped a lot. She um she's my ride or die, you know. She got married a year after we were in the Navy or I was in the Navy. Um I don't know, she just she's kind of been my my partner in crime for the last uh fifteen years married, eighteen years total. Yeah, y'all just celebrated. The we did. 15 years, three kids. But yeah, so we went, I went to the Navy, um, loved the Navy. Oh, I loved it. I tell you that all the time. Oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed the military so much, um, but um, did 10 years, and it was just, we'd had our third child, and it was just time to make a move or, to, uh, or to, a decision whether to stay in or get out, and uh, all the stars kind of aligned for us to get out. So we got out, chose to... Um, Moved back to South Carolina. We were in California at the time. Chose to move back to, you know, South Carolina. And, you know, this is where we're at. And we met you guys. And Heck yeah. Yeah, it's been a, been a cool little journey. Bro, I'm so glad we moved into that neighborhood, man. Yeah, don't ever leave. It's, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so we're we're buying, again, for the viewers, you know all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, buying the 25 acres that the thought was we may end up building a house on. But I swear, I'm trying to convince my wife, let's just do an addition. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nikki, just just accept that we, yeah. you know, this is where we're gonna be. We're gonna yeah. make that house bougie enough for you, and and roll on from there. Because, yeah. dude, I, I, and actually, so Eric and I were talking about this earlier. Eric's my business partner. Um, we were talking about this earlier. He saw this TikTok that's backed up by research that I've heard forever. That like the healthiest people in the world, um, like the what would you say the the best indicator of health is? Mm. I don't, like what you talking about, like physical appearance? Just like overall, not not so much appearance, but like a, a healthier person, like good markers, good all that kind of stuff. What would be the most common trait that healthy people have in common with each other? I don't know, dude. I'm not good at these questions. Relationships. So like having positive, positive relationships. relationships. Okay, I'm like that. leads to more overall happiness. Like if you've got positive relationships, yeah. you're non-toxic. Like, yeah, non-toxic. Right? You can't have yeah, toxic yeah. relationships. Yeah. Um, 
there's a lot of toxic marriages out there True. and you can't, you can't have that stuff, but like non-toxic, like healthy relationships, mm -hmm. it's like those people tend to be less obese, have less morbidity factors, yeah. um, be in better shape. Like it is legitimately a thing. And I think yeah. there's a lot of truth to like the whole idea of like happy people chase things that are going to make them happier yeah. and yeah. miserable people tend They'll to chase you things. Down, they're going to chase things they to make them more. They you down. They do it. I distance myself from folks yeah. like that. I can't be around those people. Dude, and it gets tough sometimes because like sometimes it's family that True. it's like is pulling you back a little bit. Yeah. You got to kind of rally against that. Yeah. And it's hard to cut ties, man. Yeah. It's really hard to cut ties. Um, but okay, so you get out of the Navy. Um, you ultimately decide now, obviously now you're with Palmetto Seating Mobility, like, which is a dope job, man. Yeah. Like, you help, you get to help a lot of kids that yeah, man. otherwise are going to be struggling and you get to, you know, be a, part of, even, be a part of their life and kind yeah. of help them. Yeah. And it's not even like out of their pocket where it's impacting the family. Most yeah. of the time it's insurance, Medicaid, Medicare, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. It's covering this stuff. Yeah. Was, was Palmetto Seating Mobility your first job out of the Navy or did you do other stuff? No, dude. I was, so I did um, 10 years in, so I was trying to roll that federal service because that's 10 years you can roll over to some type of federal job. Okay. Because uh, my goal was to retire early, right? So uh, I actually got a job with the post office because that's a federal. I know, right? That's a po that's a federal job. Wearing them little them little hiked up yeah. shorts and the little straw. I wore those, man. So anyway, so that was actually my first job out. Um, and like we post office delivering papers, post office. Yeah, but or not papers. But. Yeah, but I didn't get to that point, right? So there's I didn't. You, there's so much involved with that. So there was like a three month process of just like in doc, right? Like all these rules and regulation because it's a federal job, right? All, all right. this bureaucracy crap that is waste of time. Yeah. So you do all that stuff. So when I finally was able to get out there and start, it was like at the peak of like going towards Christmas. So you didn't have, I, there, I, we were just delivering packages, yeah. um, which is again, kind of a, a God thing because I ended up delivering a package to Mark. Okay. That's how I was introduced to him. Uh, but prior to meeting him, I was I was praying um, and telling Michelle like how much I hated this job and there's no way I could do this for long term. It was yeah. terrible. This just wasn't me. it wasn't me. And like you're not getting to interact with people and that I'm a people person, dude. So I can't I can't just ride in a car all day delivering crap and not talking to anybody. So right. um, I was actually praying for some opportunity to kind of fall in, in my lap and of course applying at different jobs and things like things like that online. Um, and then just so happened to uh, get some boxes that weren't even on my route to take to, to this business. So I get over there uh, and, you know, true story, actually met Mark. Uh, well, I hope you wouldn't lie to me. No, no, I wouldn't lie. Not to your face. <laughs> and I met Mark and um, actually was complaining about my current job okay. to him. And he was like, hey, man, blah, blah. How about shoot me a resume? I was like, done, you know. So shot him a resume and uh, going on five years with those guys now and uh it has been incredible but i think it's it's again such a weird thing so i grew up with uh an uncle who had cerebral palsy um so i was kind of conditioned to people like that with those disabilities yeah. from a young age i remember my dad would bring him around often and we would go to like nursing homes and stuff where he was living to see him and other people who were um disabled so i was kind of conditioned from a young age and then here i am you know, you know, a grown man, and that's that's the the demographics that I take care of. It's right. insane, but it is it is is super re rewarding. Um, you get to help folks out, and I think that's my main goal with my job is to, I guess, uh, pour knowledge on these people because a lot of these folks don't know what is out there to help them. Right. So one of the the, I guess, the funnest part of my job is, go, you know, first of all, getting to meet people. But then, kind of explaining to them all the stuff that is out there and how they could, how it would benefit them on right. a day to day basis, and then we get to get that for them. So yeah. it's it's super cool. Well, it's like following the Palmetto Seating Mobility, you know, TikTok page. Oh like, yeah, big TikToker. Yeah, 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 like we do we do a lot on there. But in trying to get our businesses yeah. more into that space, um, so following them, like I didn't know some of the stuff was out there. Yeah. Like the I could imagine. People in those positions are thinking, yeah, insurance is just going to give me a wheelchair. Yeah. And they're thinking the normal oh, yeah. like, little wheelchair. Yeah. And then some of the stuff they'll do, these big power chairs, and then you custom form Dude, the seating yeah. to them and stuff like that. It's like, insane. Yeah, that's a newer technology that we just um, got certified into. 
Uh, we actually got to fly out to Colorado to get certified in that, which was it was a great experience in and of itself. But yeah. but yeah, I mean, there again, and that that one uh, matter of fact, the one TikTok that went viral for us was us doing the mold on that kid. He came and picked it up. His dad and, and the son came and picked it up today, um, and he looked amazing, just cute as can be. But yeah, we we love we love doing that. I, I, that I'm telling y'all, just like. I know there's office work that has to be done, and yeah. you have to go in there and just like push through the grind. But but my my just love for this job is to go out, meet these people, uh, and again show them what all is out there, and ha- and that we can get it for you. It is so yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. And it's, and it like speaks a lot to like the whole idea of if you if you're passionate about what you're doing uh, yeah. and you love what you're doing, you're going to be yeah. ultra successful at it. Yeah, it makes a big difference. Like yeah, like I own a roofing company, Olympus Home Roofing and Solar, uh, cheap plug. <laughs> um, but um. You know, with what with what we do, like obviously, like putting roofs on somebody's house isn't like the most, or you know, installing solar for yeah. somebody isn't like the most glamorous job or anything like that in the world. But like, you know, helping somebody mm-hmm. get a new roof, getting insurance to pay for it, or or helping them with solar, um, you know, saving them money every month, getting yeah. them you know tens of thousand of dollars of tax credits and stuff uh, like yeah. that. Like that, that's a rewarding part of it. Um, but like not necessarily the actual work itself, like, you know, getting up and laying shingles yep. sucks, man. Yep. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> but the idea of being able to help people yeah. um, becomes really impactful and you can yep. find some joy in it. So it's like for you, though, like getting to see kids that are you know, either getting more mobile or mm-hmm. being able to you know have a better quality of life mm-hmm. given their their situation, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's rewarding. And then obviously that rewarding is like a kind of a reinforcement for you oh, yeah. to like, Hey, I'm going to make sure I take care of these people. Right. Then the more you take care of people, the better it feels. So the more yeah. people you want to take yeah. care of. Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of a compounding effect. And I think that's like, um, and I'm going to plug us to Palmetto City Mobility. So I think that's what sets us apart. Um, we actually were asked not too long ago by a rep, you know, what, what's the difference between you guys and other companies. So there are bigger companies than us. Obviously they're national or nationwide, but, um, they're terrible, man. Like they're they're freaking uh, personal skills. Um, the customer service is horrendous, and we hear that okay. every day. I hear that from somebody, somebody that I'm going to do a evaluation on or whatever. They're telling me how crappy their the service is from the providers. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the the bigger you get, obviously you want to continue to grow, but the bigger you get, you 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 definitely don't want to forget what got you there, and yep. you want to make sure that you continue to. Um, provide that customer service because just like you or I, you call somebody, you need a job done or something, you want to feel a connection there. Oh, yeah. You want to be able to trust these people. So I think building, and that that goes back to like the, I want to say provide instead of sell. So we provide this equipment to folks and we don't sell it, right? So, but that's what, so people are, they're, they're, they're buying us, they're buying yeah. you, they're buying me. <clears throat> when we go out there, they're, um, they like you. I mean, that's, that's, the first thing right you gotta you gotta be personal with these people and then they've got to have trust in you yeah. so and then if you're passionate about whatever you're you're selling so i'm not going to throw shade at car salesmen but typically those guys are terrible because yeah, okay. they don't care they're just there to make a profit where you and i are passionate about what we're doing yeah so we're going to make sure that we go that extra mile to make those folks happy so you go into a freaking car lot <laughs> and asking about a feature on a car, they don't know, and has no idea. They don't know what's going on. Not a clue, man. Dude, most people that go buy cars know more about the car that they're buying than the salesman that's selling mm-hmm. it to them. Like they're they're there to run numbers and get you a deal. But you know that's that's like that's like uh, almost becoming like all jobs. Like you know, yeah. used to I you know I don't, we're dating ourselves, but like. I remember going to Circuit City with my dad. Circuit City, bro. So Circuit it's City. In rare yeah, man. But, like, we would go in there, and these guys, and I I know you've seen, like, the jokes and stuff. Like, how does someone that worked at Circuit City, how did they have a, a big house, three cars, and, like, raising kids right on their yeah. salary, where it's funny. But those guys, I, I'm sure they worked on commission, too, but oh, yeah. they would come out, and, like, they would tell you all about this product. Yeah. Now, we just, we have glorified, like, shelf stockers. That's what's working in these places. Yeah. Michelle and I went to buy a printer somewhere. I'd already looked up all these printers, got all the information on them. So I know what we're going there for. Michelle's like, we should ask the guy. And I was like, we shouldn't ask the guy. He doesn't know anything. She's like, I'm probably going to go ask the guy. I was like, do what you want. Goes against the guy there. He's like, he's young. I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, bashing young people. But dude comes over there and I said, hey, man, uh, about this printer. Uh, yeah, I know Shaq. He's done. So- what are you talking yeah. about? What? So anyway, I'm asking questions to this guy. He has no idea. I looked at Michelle, and she's just like head down. 
Like she knows, like this guy, he doesn't. Know, now she's so. gonna get an earful when you get in a car. I told you, yeah, you gonna know it. Yeah, that's what's wrong with the world this day. Ain't yeah. nobody paying attention. But it's, I mean, it's and a lot of times the security is like people. Yeah. That makes the difference though between like 100%. like you, me, and what we do. Like we we are knowledgeable. You have to be knowledgeable about what you yes. are selling or providing, and you have to be passionate about it. Because if you're not, find what you are. Yeah, and but because people, they know that they'll they'll read right through the BS, you know. So. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I, I love doing what we do over there, man. It's, yeah, that's, it's, it's awesome, man. So, all right, the flip, the flip gears on yeah. what y'all do. Like, obviously, like, just from knowing you guys are growing, yeah. like, business is exploding for you guys. Yeah. You're opening up in a new market down yeah. in Charleston. Yeah. Um, so, with the big national chains out there and being, you know, starting out from a smaller player in the space mm-hmm. thing. Now, obviously, y'all are still doing really good numbers mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but like to to start competing with some of the bigger people and taking those customers from them. Yeah. Um what like what I know the difference between you guys from the customer service but how do you get the word out about that? Like what drives the growth in your company? So for the longest time uh there you know Mark uh the owner he was um it was just word of mouth honestly and I think just over the last Five years, I think he he knows me. I'm I'm like a firecracker, man. I'm ready to get out there, you know. So I think that with that, him and I both are really eager to go out there. And so we've done in services. We set up in services. We go and meet with uh, facilities and talk to them and tell them what we can provide. Um, and again, it's still a lot to do with word of mouth because okay. this the special needs community is such a um, such a niche little community, right? So all these moms and dads there's all kind of facebook little uh little little facebook uh, groups or- yeah little groups and stuff that they'll they'll spread this information and we get calls all the time They're like hey so and so told me that y'all did this can y'all get me that and again being there to answer the phone and actually right. you know not be some automated thing that they they love it and then when we tell them kind of how we do and what we do it just it just it kind of just speaks for itself really i mean we are doing stuff as far as reaching out but a lot of it still just has to do with word of mouth um, and then, you know, just going out and being personable. So yeah, that's that, I think that's, what's kind of, and I think that's like, for me, one of the big things that like drives our business is we're hungry, right? We want to help more people. We want the business to continue to grow. And too many people, it sounds like this was going on in, in this company for a little while, just kind of coasting along yeah. with what you've got going on. But when you inject that lifeblood in there, that's hungry and mm. wants to go out and get new business, like it's it's easy for that business to grow because yeah. you're going to do stuff that other people aren't doing. Yeah. Like case in point, this podcast. Like yeah. how many other roofing companies have a podcast or right. owners of roofing company here in the upstate have a podcast? Yeah. Like truth be told, my goal with this podcast obviously is to bring a lot of value to people oh, to yeah. to help people help other business people get their story out. Um, to let more people learn about them and hear about them. And as the audience for this podcast continue to grow, that's going to be awesome. And it's going to become, you know, a restaurant owner wants to get the word out about his company and his, yeah. his restaurant and what they do. So he wants to come on the podcast, yeah. tell a story about how they started it. Well, I mean, in truth, a little bit selfishly from my standpoint is that business owner is going to be trying to push it out to his people oh, yeah. to start the pod or to, to listen to the podcast, to hear his story. Mm-hmm. Well, then that's going to roll back uphill to me because yeah. as the quote unquote host of the podcast, yeah. owning a roofing company, you know, the podcast is brought to you from Josh Westmoreland of Olympus Home yeah. Roofing and Solar. Yeah. Those people now hear the name <laughs> Olympus Home <laughs> Roofing and Solar. So they need a roofing, who are you going to think about calling if they become a fan of the show? Like it's... Yeah, you know, I'm I'm of the mindset that like I don't like mind laying my marketing strategies and advertising strategies yeah. and stuff out there because nobody's gonna go do them. Right. Like it, it's just the truth right. of it. Like yeah. I can tell everybody, you know, I post it on social yeah. media all the time. Like I'm willing to give away all the things yeah. that I do because go and do it though. You know, who's gonna implement <laughs> on doing it? Like that's and that's the difference. That's what allows a company to be able to grow rapidly is they're willing to put in the work. They're willing to go chase the business. They're willing to do things that other people aren't willing to do. Yeah. Um, whether you know, because I mean, it's like getting in shape, right? Yeah. I was about, about to go that. I was about to say that exact yeah. same thing. We're we're obviously yeah. we both like enjoy working out. You work out on occasion. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Five thirty. Dude, how about I get up at five thirty this morning to work out, and this this drives me crazy sometimes. Yeah. Like. I don't know if it's people know that I get up at 5.30 to work out, so they think, like, I'm available after 5.30. Up. 
Bro, I got a text message. I get up five thirty. Yeah, get, you know, I take my pre workout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sitting there, you know, kind of waiting, you know, waking up a little mm-hmm. bit, drink a cup of coffee. My phone starts going off five forty five this morning. Now you having it? I was like, bro, like, it, that, that's my time. That's why I get up early is mm-hmm. so that that time can't be interrupted yeah. and I can get my workout in. Like, if I wait until you know after work to try to do it, something's always going to come up. Yeah. Like, work's yeah. going to run late. Something's going to yeah. happen with the kids. So like, I get up and sacrifice sleep so I can work mm-hmm. out. People start blowing my phone up at 5.45 in the morning. I'm not happy because that's my time. Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. you know, what I'm up for. But, um, but yeah, back to the point, though, it's like, it's the same thing with fitness. Everybody knows what to do to get in shape. Yep. Like, there's a monstrous obesity, you know, and, and it doesn't help that society's trying to normalize, hey, it's okay to be oh, yeah. way overweight. Yeah. Um, and listen, man, like, if you're happy with who you are, be happy, but yeah. don't complain Right, that like other people are in shape or try to yeah. demonize people that are in shape because we're willing to do what it yeah. takes to be there. It's the same thing in business. Like yeah. if you're stuck making ten dollars an hour, like don't hate on the person that's right. driving a hundred thousand dollar boat, hundred thirty thousand right. dollar car, yeah. you know, living in a two million dollar home because they were willing to do the stuff Chase. that you weren't willing to yeah. do to get there. And, but it's I, the same. and it comes back to like so my I think a one word that resonates with me often is discipline. Yeah. So you have to be disciplined um, to get up that early in the morning. Mm-hmm. I do it. You do it. I think both of us because of our, you talked about the work-life balance. That's kind of the the optimum time to be able to get your time in before you're you the Superman the rest of the day, right? Yeah. So, um, but no one, absolutely no one is coming down there knocking on your door and saying, Josh, don't forget to get up and go right. work out. You do that. You set that alarm just like I do, and I think that like any time. And then I and then this is this is just because I'm 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 a lunatic about working out. But if there's ever a time where I'm like not feeling it, I'm thinking about all the 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 weak people oh, yeah. doing the exact same thing, and I'm like, no, you're not going to be one of those. And I get up, and it's discipline. Uh-huh. Get up, you go work out. But again, I, we love working out. Both yeah. of us do. So I do take a lot of joy in working out but it is 100 percent discipline to get your butt up out of that bed Dude, the and go work so up. pretty yeah i hit it all i hit i still hit it so my <laughs> alarm is set for 4 45 and i hit that bad boy to about 5 5 15 i'm doing yeah. the same thing with the pre-workout but again um if you didn't have the and, and i think that's that is the the vast difference between people like me people like you who are so driven uh, and wh- and I don't know where that drive comes from. I don't know if it if it's chasing success or just I don't know. I have no. I thought about it often. Like what what makes me the way I am? Because there's so Dude, many people that aren't. I, so many people that aren't. And that's it's a lot easier to not be. This oh, hundred percent. It would be so much easier. I can get more sleep. <laughs> more I wouldn't sleep. accomplish nearly eat as the much. That oh I man, eat. eat all the foods that I want to eat. But you're disciplined. Dude, so discipline yeah. is like a big you know where, for me. I know where it comes from. Talk to me. me. So for me, it's insecurity. Okay. Like my whole life, and it's to meet me, to see me on social media, nobody would know like I have insecurities yeah, and yeah. I struggle with that. Yeah. Um, but my whole life, like I've had this thing in my head of, am I good enough? Am I yeah. good enough? Like, you know, with sports, I was never yeah. the best. Like I, I was athletically gifted. I've always been like, yeah. had talent, yeah. but I wasn't the all-star. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in business, like, I'm, I've got some acumen and stuff, yeah. but I'm not some guru that yeah. has everything 100% figured out from day one. Yeah. Um, with fitness, like, dude, if I didn't, if I didn't work out, like, my body frame is a twig. Yeah. Like, it's me just too, bro. It's the me way too. I'm built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so for me, maybe I, that's the drive. Yeah. I guess it, so. I'm, I feel like I'm feel... I always wanted to be like the muscular dude yeah. that people wanted to be, and I wanted to, I wanted to be looked at with. I don't want to say admiration because admiration is the wrong word. It's too strong of a word. But like, I wanted people to, I wanted people to recognize me and respect me. Yeah. And so for me, I always felt non-worthy of respect. Yeah. Until I found work ethic, mm-hmm. and I learned that like the harder I work, mm-hmm. the better I feel about myself, the more respect I command. Yeah. Same thing in the gym. Like, if I'm not happy with the way I look, or if I feel like I don't look the way I want to, yeah. Like now it's just work ethic. Because yeah. here, here's my stance, right? If, and, and I spoke at an event one time and I talked about this and it, it rubbed some people the wrong way, but I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> like if you, so if you ask somebody, if you could sw- flip a switch and have the body that you want to have, mm-hmm. like look exactly like you want to look, mm-hmm. 
would you flip that switch? Everybody's going to say yes. Yeah. Or the majority of people. Yeah. Say yes. People yeah. that are unhappy with the way they look. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, if you're willing to flip that switch, but yet you don't have the body you want or close to it, then you're just lazy. Right. Because. I agree. There's, there's no rhyme or like, yeah. there's no secret. Like yeah. you work out, you, you, write, you get there. Yeah. So if you aren't willing to do those things, you're just lazy yeah. and you don't have the dedication to do it. So it's yeah. like now, and, and obviously like laziness comes in different forms, right? Like, yeah. Um, I know people that, you know, wish that they looked a little bit better and, um, and that, that don't have that body that they want to have, mm-hmm. but their work ethic is through the roof, mm-hmm. just not on the fitness side mm-hmm. of things. So like, it's not to say that, Hey, you have to be built like some Greek statue yeah. to be yeah. valuable and to be a hard worker and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. But from, from a fitness standpoint, you know, you may be the hardest worker in the world and yeah. the office or, you know, at the office or in your job, in your profession, but if you would say you flip that switch and you don't have the body that you want, then from a fitness, from a physicality standpoint, you do have laziness. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I think that stuff applies to, to finances, to yeah. business and stuff like that too. Like everybody knows the tricks. Like there's so much free information no out there. I put a ton of it out yeah. and heck, I'm, I mean, I'm a small fish in that pond yeah. at this point. I mean, hopefully we, we change that one day and I become a lot more well-known, but like guys like Gary V, guys like Grant Cardone, mm-hmm. Grant, but guys like Brad Lee, like even Andy Elliott, yeah. man, like his dude. Those guys is, up the crack of dawn, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And, and that's the way you have to be. Yeah. Um, even though like Andy Elliott, like some of his stuff's a little little much for me. I don't, I don't, mm-hmm. yeah, I wouldn't say that I'm his, his biggest fan or supporter, but like the dude knows his stuff. Yeah. And the dude puts out a lot of free content. Yeah. Um, I mean, look at Andy, all you got to do is scroll Instagram, yeah. search entrepreneur or growth mm-hmm. success or whatever hashtag you want to search. Yeah. And you're going to find people giving plethoras of free information yeah. that will tell you exactly what you need to do to be successful. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not There's doing it, then who, who do you have to blame yeah. for not being happy with your income? Oh yeah. hundred percent. Like I, that's, I think that's a, that's another thing for me. Like I've never, I've never been a jealous person. Yeah. I may be envious of something, but I've never been jealous. I like because that. It's true. It's so true, dude. Because I, you know, if you know, if you see something that you like, like, oh, dude, that's sick. My first thought is never of jealousy. It may be envious. Oh, I wish I had that. Yeah. Next thought, what do I got to do to get it? Yep. What do I need? What move do I need to make to get to make that yeah. happen? And I think the and it. Maybe maybe it goes back to the lazy thing or the insecurity thing to be jealous and make a rude comment. Oh, that dude probably had that give to him or yeah. left to him or something like that. And and I think a lot of people do that to project their own insecurities to say, well, I'll never have that because I didn't have a rich dad or whatever. Nope. Go get it. Yeah. Go get it. 100%. What is freaking stopping you, man? That kills me. It's like if if anybody has ever been in your circumstance mm-hmm. and made it out mm-hmm. and succeeded and became that success. That that's where like we're at right now in life. Like mm-hmm. Michelle and I, we we're in the Navy. Again, love the Navy. But as far as like finances and stuff, you don't make any money in the Navy, in the military. Yeah. You don't, you just, you're not going to get rich. So how does that work? So, don't they like give you like housing and stuff? They give you, so you they, don't really have bills. They get, well, sure. Uh, and that's what I'm asking. This is, yeah. this is being, yeah. Like, well, I mean, you, I mean, just like any normal uh, family, I mean, you got your, your, uh, you know, your cars, your taxes, all that fun stuff. Okay. Uh, but, but you, you don't have to necessarily, you know, live on base. You can buy, like okay. we bought a house outside of the base there. And, um, but you know, we, we just, they don't give they give you it's cost of living allowance you know so wherever you're living like how whatever like the average medium homes are is kind of how much money you're going to make on it so if you get a house that's way more than that then uh, you know what i'm saying so you, you could different. get in trouble but there's um so you don't make a lot of money doing that stuff but but then it goes back to like the the discipline stay in discipline and continuing to chase your dreams um then you and, and it makes once you accomplish certain things that much sweeter yeah. Because you worked your tail off to get mm-hmm. there. Like Michelle and I, we reflect so much on like our past and we look at where we were to where we're at now. And it's just like, holy crap, man, check us out. Yeah. Just two two little, little lovebirds at 19 yeah. to where we're at now in life. And I think, you know, first of all, faith uh, is, a, is a huge, uh, huge thing for us. If we didn't have that, um, we'd probably still be in a lot of trouble, yeah. you know. Um, so faith's huge for us, but then just also being disciplined and, and eager and hungry to go get it. Yep. And like I said, never been jealous, maybe envious, but I, I will, I'm the type of person, I will go and do what I need to do to get whatever I want. Oh yeah. And I think that then that goes back to like 
constantly having goals. Mm -hmm. Dude, I constantly set goals for myself. And it whether it be you're going to lift 315 pounds on the squat rack, whatever. Or it's, the flight weight, come on. Well, maybe for you, <laughs> maybe for you. But I'm just saying, like, I'm going to get 350. I got 225 this week. But those are yeah. those are still technically goals. 100%. And then when you meet that and when you get that, that feel, for me, that feeling is incredible. And yeah. then so then, then that's a small goal. So when you set the big goals and you accomplish those big goals, it's like, dang, look at me. Yeah. But but all the steps that takes to get to those and, and to achieve those goals, I, it just it builds you as a person to make you who you are. And, and again, you, you look at folks who uh, complain about life or have, you know, uh, you know, this victim mindset that I don't have. You clearly don't have it um, that I can't I can't I can't empathize with that right i can't do that i just can't it, it tears me up no man it's it's brutal like the whole idea that for one entitlement yeah. like people feel like they're entitled to having what other people oh, yeah. have which is god almighty so far from the truth that's why like the universal basic income idea is such a bad idea yeah, yeah. um because like you, you don't want to give your money away no like I, okay I, I, you work hard for yeah. for yeah. my money so that. like I try to. Why do you think I drive a Tesla? It's because it was a hundred percent tax deductible. The, I could depreciate the whole acceleration, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. write the whole thing off of yeah. here. I didn't want to give the government any more of my money than yeah. I had to. Yeah. Um, so, like, but the the whole point though is like this this drive that you're talking about. Yeah. Like, everybody has a sense of entitlement that they that they shouldn't have to be that mm -hmm. way. And that's perfect. Like, listen, man, if you don't care about having nice stuff, if you don't care about being financially stable. I don't like it doesn't hurt my feelings if yeah. you feel that way. Yeah. But don't expect to have the nice stuff if you're not willing to do what it takes to get yeah, it. Yeah, and then like, give you crap for having it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, but dude, man, like, you know, you were talking about like these, you know, you and Michelle coming up from nothing. And it's yeah. like I remember, you know, I live in a nice house on the lake now. I remember growing up and we always fished on Lake Hartwell. Mm -hmm. Like that was just the spot that we went and fished. You know, it was closest lake to the house, blah, 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 yeah. whatever. So, I mean, it was just about every weekend, a lot of times we were on the lake fishing. Yeah. And I remember like looking at people's houses on the lake, just yeah. thinking like, bro, like there's no way I'll ever make it to that point. There's no way I'll ever make it to that point. That's just like, those, so that's a different fetched. class of people. So like, fetched, yeah. And yeah, I mean, dude, like when we were, when I was little, man, like money wasn't, you know, yeah, mom yeah. and dad became sex successful yeah. like later on in life. Yeah. But you know, in the early days, man, it, it wasn't pretty. Yeah. Um, so it's like, seeing and it's it's hard to get people to understand that are going through it that like there is a way out mm -hmm. um and not that we were in poverty i mean like i yeah. always had food it wasn't like we were like you know in horrible shape or anything mm -hmm. like that but we just didn't have the money for extra yeah um a lot of times but it's like once you get on the other side of it you realize that it's possible and you realize that if you could pull it off anybody could pull it off they're just not willing to do it but yeah in that in that mindset though like i can't understand the headspace of feeling like it's an impossible task yeah. to accomplish yeah. but like it's just not yeah like you you can freaking yeah. do it yeah we quit feeling like you you're owed something like yeah. the world owes you nothing right the oh the world doesn't owe you they and you ain't gonna give it to you either no they will give it to you it's like i saw i saw ricky gervais talking about this yeah. he said um he said that he is so tired of people thinking that they have the right to go through life and not be offended. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you don't. Like, yeah. life's going to be offensive. Sucks, it is what it you is. You get kicked in the mouth all yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, he And his, his quote, which I freaking loved, he said, um, and I'm going to butcher it, but it was like, I wish... I wish people would stop saying that joke's offensive yeah. and start saying that joke offended me. Yeah. Because it... I mean, that's the yeah. mindset. No matter what you do, it's going to offend somebody. somebody. Like... If oh. I if I was sitting here doing this podcast and I sat a Bud Light can down and no, I wouldn't like that a bit. Yeah, like I'd be it's so it's offended. Be offensive. <laughs> but if I sit down yeah. and I said uh, if I was had been drinking Bud Light on the podcast yeah. forever and after this whole yeah. debacle that they did from the marketing yeah. side, if I came in here the next week and sat a Yingling down, mm -hmm. people are going to be offended that I moved away from Bud Light. Like somebody's going to be offended by it. Can't make your back like, for sure. It's it's not the world's responsibility to cater to your feeling yeah. like that's your own individual stuff to deal yeah. with right yeah like it, and so people have this mindset that the world owes them something it goes from both on the emotional side with this whole freaking crap of safe spaces yeah. and all this yeah. nonsense to oh well i shouldn't have to work for the things i want yeah. and that that mentality 
is what's driving this country to this freaking yeah. breaking point that it seems to be at now. So what? So with with both of us in our mindset and the way we chase things, president, vice president, elections coming up. It's coming up too. I'll take either one. We would here. be the best at the job. It we would wear the greatest shirts. Yeah, that, bro, bro, the Make America Great Again shirt would not even like our pale in comparison. Yeah, pale in comparison. So, but true, true question. So you've got three kids. Yep. I've got three kids. How? How do you? How do you? How do you do it? How okay. do you do it? Because so, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of uh, things to say about that. Yeah. So I mean, the first thing to say is my oldest and your oldest, my oldest daughter, your oldest son are about the same age. Yeah, about to get married. Yeah. My my middle daughter and your middle son are about the same age. Yeah. And then my youngest daughter, my youngest kid, who's my son, is about the same age. Yeah. Your youngest, who's yeah. your daughter. So it's like it kind of marriages up to where like we got at least one more generation of people that's got some freaking common sense. It's gonna happen. No. Yeah. Um. I mean, the biggest thing for me is like, like with Maddie. Um, so when we initially, like when, when all these like George Floyd protests and all this kind of mm-hmm. stuff go, started going on, um, my daughter had a TikTok, TikTok account and she changed her profile picture to the Black Lives Matter logo. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a conversation with her about mm-hmm. it. And so I explained to her, I said, baby, listen, like 100%. Like the idea that Black Lives Matter <laughs> is wholeheartedly true. Mm. They definitely matter. There's corruption and there's stuff that causes, you know, that we'll never be able to understand because yeah. we don't live in that environment. Yeah. Um, so if you if you want to support the idea that Black Lives Matter, I fully support you in doing that. Yeah. But understand that the organization Black right. Lives Matter is not is not what yeah. what people are trying to portray it to yeah. be. And so I, I pull the curtain back behind a lot of stuff because, again, like if my daughter's wanting to do something from a humanitarian standpoint, from a good place of, hey, I want to try to yeah. be a voice and help people to the best I can. Yeah. Baby girl, I'm going to support you in no matter what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but I think my, my point in that is that so often right now, the mainstream media especially portrays stuff that in a way that isn't actually factual. Yeah. So if if everything were to be believed initially, like this organization's a great organization that's that's yeah. fighting a good fight and helping people. And again, like the idea of fighting that fight and helping people, I am one thousand percent in support of. Like yeah. I think racism's horrible. I think it's it's terrible. It shouldn't exist. Everybody one thousand percent should be treated equally. And yes, black lives do matter. But that organization was corrupt and they were embezzling money and they were doing a lot of stuff that wasn't to the benefit of it. So like it was trying to open her eyes to what you see isn't always the, like what the media portrays to you isn't always the reality. Right. Um, the same thing with the whole vaccinations and the COVIDs and the mask and the, it didn't come from a lab. How do you, how do you find the time to like, that's where life sucks. Yeah. Um, because obviously you're working as hard as a business owner. Yeah, Yeah. Like, you spend a lot of time at the office. Yeah. Um, people have got this this mindset that like when you own the company, you work when you want to, and that's couldn't be further from the truth. Mm. Um, so for me, it's it's in doses, right? Yeah. So first things first is for me to be able to be a good father to her and teach her these things, then I've got to take care of myself. Mm. Because if I don't if I don't take care of myself, if I don't take care of myself and kind of pave that path for her to go down she's not going to be any of my kids yeah. are going to be able to go down it. So it starts with waking up at five 30 in the morning to work out. But you're setting that example right now. I am being, being the example. example, but I, dude, I'm so behind that. Like, like the military taught me like, um, about leadership. I mean, just so many courses on leadership yeah. and you had so many leaders throughout and you always learn something from bad leaders and good leaders. But I think, being the example and uh you know do what i do don't do what i say type mm-hmm. deal and just and just knowing the difference between that is so important uh you know not only for your for your folks that work for you, your employees but more so for your children yes. and your wife like setting the example 100%. setting the bar high like you know you've got two girls i've got one girl holy crap man right. but my one girl like the bar will be so high mm-hmm. for someone to take my place yep. 
It's going to be insane. And that's the she, goal, right? And, oh, that's 100% the goal. Like, this dude better be a stud, man. Yeah. He's going to have to be a stud. Yeah. Well, it's like you want to, you want to, because I mean, the whole ad is, what was the whole quote that like ma- women tend to marry somebody just like their dad? Yeah. Like, well, if that's going to be the case, by God, this dude's going to be a rock star. Yeah. Not rock star in the sense of sleeping with a bunch of women and Don't doing a lot that. of drugs, yeah. but like, you know, he's going to be yeah. a man a worth good marrying, dude, right? man. And yeah. then you want to set the example for your sons. Oh, yeah. How do you how treat do you your future wife? Yeah. So, um, and then I think, honestly, dude, like I, and again, it's weird because the, the mix up with our kids, yeah. you know, but. I struggle a lot of times because I've got two boys and I have to teach both of them to be men and yep. they're both completely different personality wise. So I have to find that. How do I connect to both of these guys? And then I got to make sure that I'm pouring into both of them the same amount yeah. because I want both of them to be outstanding men and future husbands. Um, but that's to me, that's a difficult job because I, and I, and I feel like I fail every single day. We all do. Every but single day. I feel that way. The, the effort, is what makes up for the failing. Yeah. Um, so like I said, so like on, on the idea of the example thing, like kid, and, and I've, I've wholeheartedly held this to be truth for since I became a dad is kids don't really pay attention to what you say. Mm-hmm. They Correct. pay attention to what yeah. you do. Yeah. Um, you can talk to them till you're blue in the face and yeah. like, Hey, even so with Maddie, like mm. her and Nikki are, freaking clones of each other Mm -hmm. all the stuff that that nikki fusses at maddie or gets upset about maddie for is the same exact stuff that nikki does like (laughs) you remind her of that oh you do on occasion all right um only when i'm not expecting anything to go down later on that (laughs) night um but like no they're i mean they're clones of each other yeah so like in the idea of being the example because the the one skill that i've always had is like, you know, there's all these different personality types, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I couldn't even list them all, but like I took a quiz to see how accurate it was. And bro, it was that on. I was a peacemaker with mm-hmm. the personality mm-hmm. type I had, mm-hmm. um, which is, and thinking back over life, it's 100% true. Like I'm the middleman of like when there's confrontation. I feel like I'm the confrontation. Yeah, so I feel like I stir up confrontation. Michelle would say that. Yeah, yeah. I could. Say, I, yeah. Michelle would definitely say that. Yeah. About but you. that's probably why me and you get along so well, though. Yeah, you stir yeah. it up and I just, I, yeah. I dissolve it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, no. So like, I'm, I'm that peacemaker and that's what's allowed me to be successful in business. Yeah. If I've yeah. got a ticked off customer, if something, oh, yeah. bro, I've had a Find customer, yeah. I went out there for a customer issue. Like he was ticked off at us calling the office, raising cane mm-hmm. because of how upset he was about mm-hmm. something. I went out there to visit him. And by the time I left, he did a video testimonial for it. Nice. Like it's, it's completely changed. Yeah. It's yeah. a, well, and it's a skill set of under it, being empathetic. Mm-hmm. So empathy is the driver to everything that I do. Mm-hmm. Hell, understanding somebody else's perspective yeah. and then providing them what they need on that. Because yeah. in truth, most people that are upset just want to be heard. Oh yeah. Um, sure. So like with Maddie and Nikki, like I'll have conversations with Maddie about how to deal with her mom. Yeah. And I, and that sounds so much worse than I mean that to say. <laughs> um, but it's, it's a present day opportunity for her to learn these skills yeah. as a teenager that is going to craft her into Help being her. able to be yeah. ultra successful yeah. later on in life. Yeah. So it's like, and it's, it's, when I say deal with her mom, it's stuff like if, Maddie leaves her dishes on, you know, the the coffee table or mm-hmm. something like that mm-hmm. instead of putting them up. It is we've got two freaking crazy dog or one especially crazy dog that is going to get into it. It's going to knock something over, and yeah. our three year old throws everything yeah. he can get his hands on across yeah. the room. So, like, obviously that leads to a mess, which leads to Maddie getting in trouble for not mm-hmm. putting her plates up like mm-hmm. she's supposed to. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's teaching her in those situations how to navigate that circumstance yeah. to avoid yeah. that issue. Yeah. And then how to read people and interpret. So if you know that you're supposed to do something that's going to upset somebody else, like you need to take it, take the responsibility on yourselves yeah. not to do that thing. It's just, yeah, teaching them how to be adults, right? right? So teaching, like, um, I constantly use the word leadership when I'm talking to all three of my kids. Oh, uh, I constantly use the word leadership because it was instilled in me through the military. Um, everybody's a leader. Yeah. Everybody has an op- uh, opportunity to be a leader. Um, if you step up yep. and again, goes back to the folks that are, that don't want to step up, even just whatever they're doing, step up, take, take the initiative and be that leader. hundred yeah. percent. Don't be the follower. hundred percent. Right. Don't be the follower. Um, you know, I followed some people down some, some tight spots, man. <laughs> so I'm not for that, but I, so I constantly use that word with all three of my kids at any time that, you know, Jace, uh, my oldest is acting up, 
I constantly remind him, you know, you're the leader, dude. Like you're the oldest. You you set the example. So they're going to follow you. So you want them to do this. Mm -hmm. So so whenever I'm busting at them for something that you taught them how to do, how does that make you feel? So I I have like some pretty in depth conversations with them, and you know it's 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 varies as far as their age go, how deep I go. But right. Jace, I, me and him can go pretty deep, and he understands what I'm talking about. But but I constantly use the word leadership because one day they will be future leaders right. in whatever they're doing, whatever their jobs may be. But uh, yeah, discipline and um, leadership, it, it's 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 uh, things that I want to be to I want to instill in all three of the kids. But well, and the going deep thing is something that not enough parents do. That's true. So like most, and parents, that takes time because it takes time. It's effort. Yeah. It's it's again, yeah. it goes back to that like, hey, my life should be sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. I shouldn't have to try and apply myself to anything, mm -hmm. dude. Applying yourself as a parent is. So much so important in applying so yourself important. at work. Like, so, like, too many parents take the approach of they're almost reactionary parents. They they yeah. react to things instead of being proactive yeah. about things. So, like, trying to teach your kids and lay the groundwork. Like, mm -hmm. I use it. I I use the term strategic parenting mm -hmm. is is the way I like to refer yeah. to it. So, like, if I'm wanting my kids to modify their behavior. If I just come down on them and jump on their case and fuss at them, I'm not doing anything to modify their yeah. behavior. I've got to come up with scenarios in which I can teach them and let that become a learned skill for oh, yeah. them yeah. to learn that. Like a life lesson. Like yeah. let, sometimes kids are going to make mistakes. Yeah. Let your kids make mistakes, especially yeah. when you know, you know, as a parent, you can generally anticipate the consequences of mistakes. Yeah. So like let your kids make those mistakes when yeah. the consequences aren't going to be so high so that they learn from it. And then it gives you opportunities to to mentor them and to coach them mm -hmm. into situations that's going to like lay that groundwork yep. for future success. Do you feel like as a dad? Do you feel like dad and husband and like um, leader right of your family? Yeah. Do you ever feel like it's just so heavy, like trying to right. lift that? Like, all right, so we're, we're going to talk about getting deep a little bit. Oh. Bro, I cannot tell you how many days. Yeah. Like, from this office. I mean, this isn't something that happened years yeah. ago. Like, as a guy that feels like he's got life figured out pretty well, I can't yeah. tell you how many days, like, instead of listening to a podcast or listening to music on the way home, mm -hmm. like, I'm driving home in tears, literally tears coming down my face because of how heavy the burden of being this person is. But I don't, um, and I, you know, I've tried to explain that to Michelle, and uh, I, she, I think she hears me, um, but it's just, and, and she, now, kudos to my wife, holy crap, that chick holds, she holds, she's the glue, right? Yeah. But I constantly feel, and I, and I, I feel this way because, it, I see it every day. I go, I go to work. You're being pulled out. You go home. You're being pulled out. It's just so many, and you're you're only one person. Yep. But you're being pulled in a thousand different directions, and I think it goes back to uh, not letting people down thing too. Yep. Like you, I, I want to be the answer to the problem. I want exactly. to fix whatever. So with that comes an extreme amount of weight. It's ridiculous. And so then it goes back to working out. What do you do to get those endorphins fired up? You know, yep. I'm in the gym. I'm killing it in the oh, gym. Yeah. You have to. There has to be an outlet. And for me, it's the gym. It's, I think you're the same. Oh, 100%, man. It's the daily anchor. If I don't work out in the morning, dude, I, I so rarely take a rest day. Yeah. It's generally seven days a week. Maybe yeah. not waking up at 530 on the weekends. Yeah. I'll do it when I wake up. Yeah. Um, But it is so rare for me not to work out because, again, if I don't do it, I yeah. feel horrible the okay. entire day. Even if it's, hey, I'm just going to go do 15 minutes of walking lunges. Yeah. Or, I'm going to do on days that you don't work out. You like a chick with no makeup. Bro, it's pretty much, that. yeah, like I'm catfishing y'all when I get a little pump on. That's basically how it works. <laughs> um, yeah. But no, it's, um, dude, it's such a heavy burden, man. Yeah. Like, and I don't think, I don't think there's a woman on the planet mm. that can, can appreciate. Uh, now, given there are Debbie dads out there, there are Debbie yeah. husbands yeah. out there that don't yeah. care. But as a husband... As a husband that like wants to look out for his family, yeah. that wants to be a good father, that's successful in his career, it's like heavy. I don't think like it's possible yeah. for a woman to understand that. Now, I, I say that with the caveat that like there's some single moms that have to wear all those shoes, true. and that's a completely different ballgame. I'm true. talking like man and wife, oh, yeah. like wives just cannot understand like how heavy that burden is because well, and two, 
you're tough, dude. Like you can't yeah. show emotion. Exactly. And I don't show emotion. Yeah. Very rarely do I show emotion. If, so if I've got, if my wife and I, if something is bothering, and Michelle says I have a, a black heart. That's what yeah, she said. But, but there's no way I could do the job that I do if I had a black heart. No, it's, it's, that's not, not a true. I just, heart. it's a, yeah. For me, it's like when there's stressors, if there's, if there's something going on. Yeah. It's like if it's work, work's crazy. I've got, yeah. you know, I'm under ridiculous stress because I'm trying to get something out or the kids have this going on and mm-hmm. this situation stressing me out. Like I can't talk to my wife about it. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm sure she would be all ears to listen, yeah. but. And they get it, burned out too from they hearing do. about us. They do. They, they, they. and, and it's not a, it's not a, like a jab at my yeah. wife yeah. because if I was willing to talk to her about it, she yeah. would listen, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Right. But it's my burden to carry, right. not hers. Right. And there's, it's kind of one of those things where like you think about if, if you could pick somebody's getting bit by a shark and your leg's going to get bit mm-hmm. on, would you rather it be you or your wife or kids? Mm-hmm. You're going to take that, mm-hmm. you're going to take that shark bike every day mm-hmm. of the week. Mm-hmm. So like, it's the same thing emotionally for me is when all this weights on me, I feel like I can't share it because if I share it, she's now carrying that too. Mm-hmm. Why should both of us mm-hmm. carry it when I can just shoulder the load and yeah. push through? Yeah. And sometimes it does, man. Like, I don't want to say it gets to a breaking point, but it gets to a point where you, I literally will break down in tears, yeah. like driving home, you know, stop at the QT before I make it to the house yeah. and just like straighten up a chug second. Beer. Like chug a beer. Yeah. Go, <laughs> go get a, a, a malt liquor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just pound yeah. that thing. And yeah. Get a little buzz on that. No. Um, <laughs> Like, but it, it is, man. Like, yeah. it gets to be such a heavy burden um, because, A, like, you feel like you're in it alone. Even though you've got best friends that you can talk to, you've got, like, you've But got I think that's just wrong. men in general, it's though. Men. It's just the, the pride, yeah. obviously. Uh, but I think then that goes back to community, you know, like yeah. with the church. And, and obviously, you, you know, yeah, faith is, a faith is, is huge. Like, if you didn't have that, it'd be rough. But yeah, you've got to be still able to, heavy. In, in those situations, to be able to turn to God and say, hey, man, like, yeah. Listen, like you know what's weighing on my heart. I can't like, do it all. I can't do it all. I need like, yeah. I need comfort. I need yeah. reprieve. I need like, yeah. You know, I'm putting my faith in you that this is what it's supposed to be, and I'm going to push through it. And my man always comes through. Um, that's a fact. That's like, a fact. But I think too, like I think so, and then I feel like, you know, it's my responsibility too to be the, you know, Michelle refers to me as the fun dad. You, yeah. You're the same. Oh thing, yeah. You know so. But I feel like that's a important factor too, because I know that, you know, the kids and, you know, your spouse look to you as as that fun. Yeah. So then, anytime you show emotion, it, it's a, it's a weird. They take yeah. that a weird way. Like what? It's not all dad's you? emotional. It's yeah. like because if you're if you're a dad that's here yeah. and, you know, for people just listening to the podcast and not watching on on video, um, sorry. But like if you're normally here, yeah. if this is zero. Yeah. Like and you're a little upset, you just came this far. Yeah. But like if you're the fun dad and you're normally up here and you're a little upset, like that gap's a lot bigger. It is. Um and it is, man. Like, dude, you know how many days, like, and it's it's almost literally just about every day of the week. Yeah. Like I'll get home, you know, if I get home five thirty, six o'clock, whatever, long work day. Um, you know, been up since five thirty. Mm-hmm. Like I get home. Ander wants to go jump on the trampoline. I do not tell my kids nothing. Right. Like if my kids want to go outside and be active versus sitting in the house yeah. and but you're play the, video. you're you're bringing home the fun though. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Regardless of what's going on in your in your world, it matter. You're bringing you're home that fun, person. and that's it. And that's almost the expectation. And and I, I but I like that. I love oh, that that, that smile on the kids' faces. That changes me. Just like oh, that, yeah. you know. So, but it's just it's a difficult and heavy burden to bear for sure but i you know i think that's just uh i I don't know what the answer is dude i think this just is what it is dude i think i think society's done a really good job of trying to tell men that they shouldn't be men i'm a man um (laughs) like i think that's because realistically like this conversation although like it's worth having because i think there's probably men out there that struggle with this kind of stuff that that think they're alone, that think oh, they're yeah. the only one that feels yeah. this way and it, it messes with them yeah. emotionally. Like, I think this conversation is beneficial in that to help them. Yeah. But as far as changing anything, yeah, there's not, I don't know. like, this is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Like a man's role in the family oh, yeah. is to be the person that carries the burden. Yeah. Like that's what God designed us to do. Exactly. That's what we're supposed to be. Yeah. Like, you know, the Bible talks about, like a man is supposed to love his wife like God loves the church. Mm-hmm. Well, 
God laid his life down for the church. But like preach. we are su- <laughs> like our lives are supposed to be sacrificed right. for our family. Right. Like, and don't get me wrong. Like I drive a nice car. Like I, I do a lot of stuff that I love to do. Mm-hmm. It's not all doom and gloom. I don't yeah. want to make it sound like my life, like yeah. that life's supposed to be miserable because I freaking love my life and I enjoy it to the yeah. fullest every single day. But like as a overall thing, especially when it comes to like the emotional burden side yeah. of things, a man's role is to sacrifice for his family. Mm-hmm. It's not your wife's responsibility to carry yeah. your emotional burdens. Yeah. It's your responsibility to carry yours and hers. Yeah. Not for her to carry yours. Yeah. And it's doable. We're doing it. Me and you are doing it daily. Yeah. It's not, I mean, like it as bad as like it sounds yeah. talking about it, it's not, man. Yeah. Like it's knowing that you were doing what's right for your family yeah. is like the most rewarding feeling oh, yeah. in the world. Yeah. And I think going back, like setting goals, like having goals, uh, like if you, like you say, the doom and gloom, like if you did that daily and you had nothing that you were reaching for, yeah. it'd be a miserable life. Dude. Right. I constantly strive for things, 100%. Uh, whether it be things or, you know, ideas or places I want to be in life. You know, that's, that's kind of that driving factor. Bro, I got to buy a camper. I don't know why you got it already. Yeah, I got it. Kind of upset that you had already got one. Well, see, the whole we've had ours since February. Y'all have, so it's y'all been have. like, yeah, we um, the the land is gonna be dope, man. Um, when we close on that land, then we'll be then we'll turn our sights to buying us a camper. Yeah, but um, we got a couple more weeks left before closing day. Yeah, man, and the land will be ours, and then, bro, we need like, kind of thinking we start like a compound <laughs> on on the land, and it's yeah. just like as crazy as this country's getting, yeah. all these people like. We'll charge like an admission. Is it David Koresh? Is that what we're doing? You I don't know who that is. You don't know who that is? Who's David Koresh? You know, he's the guy that he started a compound. Okay. Texas. Waco, uh, Texas. Sorry, right? I'm with him Waco. so far. Yeah. Oh, you like him? So far. Yeah. So he was a preacher. Okay. Yep. Uh, he, like him? He believed he was the, 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 I think he thought he was the second coming. Okay. That's uh, taking a little far. Well, but. We're, you were kind of going there. No, no, no. I just want like I just want to start a cult. Okay. Like I don't, I'm not gonna say I'm yeah. like God or Jesus. Like I'm. But just then he, he also were he 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 convinced the men to come into the compound with him, and then okay. he convinced them that they no longer could sleep with their wives, but he could sleep with their wives. Okay. Um, so so he had that going for him. I mean, he impregnated some of these women okay. in this compound, bro. That <laughs> there's, kind of... a, there's a there's a docu series on Netflix. You should. Okay, Never I'm definitely out. watching that. Yeah, like, cause see, here's the thing: <laughs> if you can, if you can pull that off, there's not a whole. What is that? Stuff. Well, you you talk about this a salesman, a trillion. You talk about a salesman. Like, how do you I've convinced this, this dude that I'm going to sleep with your wife, and you can no longer sleep with her? Bro, that is insane. In the name of of God. Okay, yeah, yeah. like that dude. Oh, he was insane. That dude deserved. He deserved total ass whooping. Yeah, no, he yeah. definitely did. Um, but no, like let's start. So I, compound. I'm trying to think. I'm, no, I mean I'm I'm comfortable with the word cult. Like we don't have to call it a compound. We can, we can just call it what it is. Call it a cult. Dude, like in then you label it Westmoreland. Yeah, it's the Westmoreland cult. Yeah. Like and it just are you a Westmoreland? Yeah. Like when you you have to legally sign your name. Now you do have to sign over all your earthly possessions um, <laughs> to gain access to the cult. Jeez. Um, but then, because the country's going crazy, and, uh, eventually, that's, that's, and then if we get enough people, I'm sure there's some way that we can, like, secede from the union mm. and become our own independent nation, mm. and then just, like... The pay no taxes. Pay no taxes. taxes. No. Well, we ain't... Westmoreland I mean, taxes. Yeah, Westmoreland taxes. Like, you gotta... Yeah, somebody, somebody... You don't somebody, really have any earthly right. possessions anymore because you signed them all over. Right. So there's nothing to really even yeah. tax in the first place. Yeah. Um, Who's gardening? I mean, no, like... Can you, you do you, that? garden it yeah can you like can you plant things and grow um no see that's that's where like i'm recruiting that's what this whole podcast yeah. is supposed to be about I'm like, i'm there I, I planted things and they're they yeah don't. i can kill stuff oh yeah. i can hunt yeah i can do that good so i'll, I'll have it we'll just no that we don't need to go we're on the carnivore diet roger yeah i like the carnivore yeah diet. we'll just be yeah. on the carnivore diet and yeah. that i can handle no fruits no lettuce mm-hmm. that crap's for the rabbits yeah no like my my food eats your food done like it makes no sense yeah so it's history yeah brother I appreciate it, man. Yeah, but enjoyed it, Brian. We'll have you on again soon, bro. Yeah, man. Cool.